Hello everyone, my name is Anton and today I want to get into Vim binding for Obsidian. Now, um, Vim is, you know, it, it originates from the Unix world where you only had a terminal to work with to edit the different files that were on the, the, the Unix uh, platform or operating system. So it's really good at navigating through text files and manipulating the, the actual content in such a way that you don't need a mouse. So let's get into how you can leverage Vim bindings in Obsidian. It is a core feature that Obsidian provides. It's not on by default, but we'll go ahead and turn it on. And what I'll do is kind of a getting started with Vim bindings and Obsidian in this video. But before we get into the video, go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. It helps the channel out and it helps this content get out to other individuals just like yourself. Alrighty, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get to the video. All right, so we're in Obsidian right now and, and I have a document open here that I copied some text in that we can work with. I do have the Vim by needs already enabled but here we'll walk through the settings area so you can see how to get to those. Now, this is typically something I would have thought might have been in the core plugins or third party plugins, but it's actually in the editor settings, which um, where it really should be, but because they're something that's typically an add on, you know, most people might look for it in the, the plugins area. So you, if you navigate all the way down to the bottom here, you'll see the Vim key bindings. Go ahead and just turn that on. And when you turn that on, what you'll notice is that when you click into a text file, one of your notes or documents that you have in Obsidian, you'll get this little green um, terminal type prompt here that, that would typically show up in a console. And it's really meant to look this way, I think, and give you kind of some context on when you're in the view mode or when you're in the edit mode. So when you see the green blinking cursor here, you're in the view mode. So you, you cannot particularly just start writing on the keyboard or with the keyboard and editing your text. What you would need to do is then Put it into an edit mode which can be done in a number of ways but if we put it in edit mode you'll see that the the green um, prompt disappears and it goes to the the default black prompt there that's blinking inside the text file that means that you can actually edit into the into the document now i'm not going to get into any really complicated uh, vim bindings here this is really kind of a getting started guide to Vim. So the first area that I think is good to start off with is the navigation. So you have these navigation keys within the Vim bindings and Vim, again, it was mainly used in a terminal. You didn't have a mouse. So all these bindings are really meant to make your life more efficient in an environment where there is no type of mouse input. There's only keyboard input. If you have arrow keys on the on your keyboard, you can still use those even though there are navigation keys on here that if you don't have the, the up, down, and left, right arrows on your keyboard, uh, you can still navigate throughout the your, your document here. So some of the navigation here is you have the the H, J, K, and L row of, of letters here. And if you're typing, your fingers are on the keyboard, typically they're going to be right there. So if you need to move to the right, you're hitting that L key. If you need to move over to the left, you're hitting the H. And then the two in the middle, the J and the K, is going to take you up and down. So this should become pretty natural after you start using it. Vim is does have kind of a learning curve to it because there are so many key, key bindings to it in order to really take advantage of Vim. But once you get used to the, the key bindings, they can really make navigating throughout the document much, much faster, much more efficient. Okay, so we talked about the, the J, the K, 
uh, navigation keys uh, being leveraged also with the the L let's move to an actual the L and then the H to go left let's go ahead and move throughout the actual screen a little bit um, a little bit further here so if we want to get to the let's say if we go 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 down in the um, in the in the page here and let's say we're somewhat close to the bottom and we need to get all the way up to the top the first line on the screen here so in order to do that you just do um, con the shift key and H so capital H you hit that it goes all the way up to the head of the file if I need to get all the way back down to the bottom of the screen then you'll go ahead and do a capital L or shift L and then if you need to get into the middle it's shift M so pretty easy again to get to the head of the screen you just do shift H get to the bottom is shift L and then into the middle is going to be shift M okay so what if we're on a line and we want to start navigating throughout the line and start maybe working working with some of the words here so if we want to jump forward to the start of a word in a line all we need to do is hit the W and you see how we went from we went from simply to mummy and from mummy I can move to text and it and it stops us on that first character in that word now if we want to go ahead and navigate to the last character in the word you can do that by typing the E key and we hit E and now we're at the end of text and if we want to go to the end of of which is the next um, word we can go ahead and hit E again and then keep going until we get to the end of where we want to be now if we want to go backwards and go backwards navigating to the start of the word we can just do B so B will take us backwards but it's going to place us at the beginning of each word going one at a time going backwards okay so how about if we're in the in a certain line here we're on line four and let's say we want to get to the end of line four we want to start typing something all the way at the end here or we just want to navigate to the end of this line we can just do a dollar sign or shift four and that will take us to the end of the line on here and if we want to get back to the start we can just do zero the number zero here now shift and then the uh, four which is the dollar sign symbol will get us to the end and zero will get us back to the beginning of the line now if we want to navigate to the first line of of the document itself then what we want to do here is do a double G we click on the double G and if we want to go to the last line of the document we can do capital G and you can see how that took us off the screen all the way down to the beginning of the last line in the document now to scroll through the the paragraphs we can do the curly brackets you have uh, the opening curly brackets and the closing the open one will take you uh, backwards and the closed one will take you forward throughout your document navigating through to each paragraph now those are some simple navigation keys that you can use with the vim bindings and obsidian to kind of navigate around practice those get used to them so as you learn these key bindings you will become a lot faster at navigating throughout the document without using your mouse or trackpad okay so once you have the the navigation down the next step we're going to want to do here is start inserting into your edit modes so now let's move over to a couple words here and if we want to insert right here before the cursor all we have to do is i now i is a pretty simple one if you learn i you maybe think of input and when you're you're not you're in view mode if you want to quickly go into your edit mode here just click the letter i and then you can start editing from there now we'll go back 
I'll hit escape to go back into view mode. Now you have to be in this view mode where the green cursor is blinking in order to do any of the navigation or use the, the Vim bindings. So if you need to get back into this view mode, you hit the escape button. And I also click U to undo. So that's one of the, one of the things you're probably going to do a lot if you're typing things and if you mess up, you can just click the U to undo whatever you've done. Now, if we're somewhere here in the middle of the, the line and we want to go into edit mode right at the beginning of this sentence, what we have to do is do a shift I. So that shift I takes us to the beginning of that line. And then from there, I can edit this document. We'll go ahead and go into view mode. We're we'll undo that using the U key. Let's move forward through here and get to another to another word here. And we want to do an append right now. So we're going to append after the the cursor. And to do that is the A key. So if we hit the A, you see that the the cursor now moves behind where it was before. And from here we can edit. Now, if we do the same thing and we use the capital A, what will happen is it will take us to the end of the line. So you can see here where it moves us to the end of the line. If you do the capital A, it moves you to the end of the line. So remember, let's go ahead and es escape there. So if we do the capital I, we can go to the beginning of the line there. And if we do the capital A, we go to the end of the line. Okay, so if you want to append some content in a new line underneath the line that you're in, all you have to do here is do a lowercase zero or lowercase O. Let's go ahead and go back into edit mode, lowercase O, and that will take you down below into the into a new line so that you can start editing. And if you want to append at the beginning of the line that you're on, you can do a capital O. So if I go ahead and go back into the view mode there, I do capital O. You see it put a new line at the top of the line that I was already on. And now I can edit in, into this line. Now, if I want to delete this line, I can just do DD to delete the entire line dd and i can delete that entire line now i could have also un undo where i'm doing undo here clicking the u button and i could have just did the undo to remove all of that information that i typed now if i want to insert um, something at the end of a word i can just do ea and it will put me in the edit mode right behind the word here. So if you're somewhere selected, if the cursor is somewhere in that word, you can easily edit the, the end trailing of the word if you need to. We'll go back into edit mode. We'll undo. So if I'm in a word, I'm here in this word version. And let's say I need to replace that I with something else. And the way I can do this, and it does this without even going into the edit mode, is I can go ahead and click on the R click on R for replace and I can change that I to an O. So click on R type in the letter and then you can replace the, the actual letter that where the cursor was. Now in order to select um, the, the actual text where the cursor is, you can type V and if you need to say, copy more, you can just scroll over as you're using your arrow keys here, right? Use your arrow keys after you've typed V to select more text within the document. And if you need to go, let's say the other way around, either way, this will work. Now, if you go up, it'll select everything above. And if we do the opposite here and we start going down, we can start selecting down as well. So use those arrow keys once you've put it in that selection mode by by typing the V when you're in the of the Vim bindings. And then you can kind of 
come in here and select the different things. So I've did an undo here to get out of the selection. We'll go ahead and select this, this letter again here. And let's move over and select a couple more of these letters. And what I want to do here is change the case on these letters. So if I want to go uppercase here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type G and then the capital U. And we can see how the letters that were selected are now capital. And if I want to put those back into lower case, then I can go ahead and select those again and then do G and then lowercase u. Now, if I want to say change an entire line, so this is a line and I want to change everything in this line, I can easily just do uh, put this into edit mode and or back into the view mode and then I can type CC and it deletes everything in that line so that I can start typing something to replace what was there. So let's say I quickly want to delete a character that's selected here and then have it replaced. Now I, the cursor is right in front of the E. So if I do this in front of the E, it will just do it for the E. And let's go ahead and type S here and that deletes and put me into edit mode. And then I can go ahead and type what I want to type here. Now I can go ahead and put that uh, back into edit mode. Let's do V. We'll select these three letters here and we'll type S again and we'll go ahead and replace that. So that's a quick way to delete the character, put you in the edit mode, and then you can start typing. Now let's say you want to copy some text from here. Now we can navigate throughout here. Let's go ahead and put that back into edit mode. We'll um, hit V to select. We'll go ahead and select this particular word out of here and we'll do Y to yank this text or copy this text. And then we'll go to the end of the line. We'll go ahead to a new line here. And what we can do is paste it there by going back into vi um, the view mode there and then uh, typing P to paste. Now, one thing that, um, let me see if I undo this here, let's go into edit mode. The control V, if you try to do con control V on this here, after you've already selected it, you can see that it does not work here. Now, if I put it back into the edit mode and I do V, I'm at P, I, you can see that within the buffer of the Vim bindings there, the that word has been captured to the uh, to the buffer of the Vim bindings, but it will not work for say if you're just doing a Control V to paste that in there. And let's say I want to go ahead and replace this entire line from our key bindings. What we can do is we can go ahead and let's put this back into the mode we need it in. Let's do V. Let's do the number zero to select the entire row. And if we go ahead and do P, we can paste the, the, the text that we had in the buffer there on that line and replace the entire line. And we can see how fast that was. Did not have to pick up the, the mouse and select the entire row. Um, it, it's just using keyboard shortcuts here. We were able to do that. Now let's go ahead and undo this here. And let's say we have say another line here. This is another line and we, we have our, our cursor. Let's go out here and let's go to the beginning here. So, and we want to copy both of these lines. We can just do two Y Y. And because we've put the two in front of there, it signifies that we want to do a copy of two lines. And so if I move down and I go ahead and paste this now, we paste two different lines here, as we can see. So I can delete this space here by doing DD and I can go back up again and do four YY 
And then if I go ahead and go down, let's hit P. And now we have four lines of, of actual text or four lines that we copied and then pasted here. Okay, so now if so, let's say we want to indent some of this text here. So let's go ahead and what we'll do here is we'll edit and then we'll just put heading here and below what we want to do is indent these um, these next these next lines here. Now there's a lot of different ways I guess you can you can use to select all of this here, but I'm going to go through and let's. Well, going the wrong way. Let's go ahead and select the lines here. And what I want to do is do an indent. And to do that, we're going to do the double greater sign. And once you do that, you see that it's um, it did indent the all of the lines that I had selected. So that's one easy way that you can um, indent content. So let's say we want to de-indent this particular line. I could do an undo because I just did this, but let's assume that this was already here before and we need to de-indent these lines all over again. We can go ahead and select that text again. And if we move down, select these rows, we can go ahead and do a shift and then the less than sign and then that will get us back to the um, where we were before or de indent those lines that we selected. Now you don't have to do more than one. You can do that just with one line or two or however many you select. OK, so lastly, what I want to get into is the searching uh, capabilities that you can use with the the Vim bindings. And to do that, all we have to do is here is do the the uh, backslash. And once we're in the backslash here, we can go ahead and just uh, type in the word we want to search for. And we can see that I've typed in the word line and the line is highlighted on all the different uh, rows up here. Now, if I go out of the search um, and I want to repeat that same search again and kind of navigate through, I can do the N key. So the N key will go ahead. It remembers what that last search term was. And then if I hit the N, it will start scrolling through. You can see the green cursor is scrolling through all of the lines that have that in it. And if we want to go and and also re repeat the same thing that I'm doing, but in the opposite direction, you can go ahead and do capital N and then it goes backwards or the other way. So let's say we want to get a little bit more advanced on our search and we want to do a search and replace. So I'm going to hit the colon and I'm going to do a percent sign S. Then we'll do a backslash. And what I want to do is take that the the word line and I want to replace it with something new. And let's just call this maybe circle. So I want to call this circle and then the G will go ahead and replace everything that um, that I'm saying I want from the old word, which is line to the new word circle. Don't even ask me, just go ahead and replace every one. So if we go ahead and hit enter on this, we'll see we went through this, this document and if we search for line again, we'll see that there are no words line found in here. So if we go through and we search for circle, we'll see that circle is in the spot where we had the word lines. Now, if we want to go back and let's um, let's convert everything that we had as circle to line. And then what we could do also here, if you don't want to just blindly replace everything, you can do GC and the GC will um, have it for confirmation. So this will ask for confirmation on every time it finds a word before it does the replace. So if we click enter on here, 
it finds its, you know, its one instance of circle. And then at the bottom here, it's basically ask if we want to um, do the replace or not. So I don't want it to ask me again. I'm going to select A and then it goes through and it replaces everything again. All right, so those are some Vim bindings in Obsidian that can get you started with using Vim. Um, or the Vim bindings and Obsidian. Vim is very powerful or the Vim bindings are actually very powerful. And there are a lot more than what I showed in this document. So you can go search on Google, find all the different um, options that you have for using and with Vim bindings and put this thing to use. But the ones that I've shown here, I think will if you can get those down and um, and and feel natural at navigating through those bindings that I, I showed in this video, that you're well on your way to becoming a you know an expert uh, keyboard hacker on these documents where you don't need to use your mouse to edit documents and and type within Obsidian. Well, I hope that that was helpful. If it was, go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel. And until the next time, have a nice day.